have you ever wondered? Why some lessons just click, while others vanish like smoke the moment the class ends? Is it just about attention, talent, memory, or is something deeper happening? You see, most people think learning is about stuffing information into a container. But your brain isn't a box. It's a living, breathing, changing organism. Every time you learn something new, your brain rewires itself. Literally. I'm not a physician. I'm a high school chemistry professor. But the more I've studied how students actually learn, the more I've come to believe this. Learning is a spiritual process as much as a neurological one. And strangely enough, one of the earliest thinkers to point this out wasn't a neuroscientist. He was a lawyer and a mystic named William Walker Atkinson. He believed thoughts weren't just ideas. They were vibrations, currents, forces that shaped your mental world, brick by brick. Today, we're merging the frontiers of modern neuroscience with the timeless wisdom of Atkinson. To show you how every moment of learning sculpts your brain and your destiny. And here's something important. At the end of this video, I'll guide you through a powerful, science-backed practical exercise. Something you can start using today to rewire your brain and learn anything faster and deeper. But it only works if you understand the full picture. So I invite you to stay with me, because by the end, everything will click into place. And if you're passionate about unlocking your mind, transforming your thoughts, and bridging ancient wisdom with modern science, then consider subscribing to Speech and Mind. This is the space where thought becomes power and learning becomes transformation. So let's begin. The brain is always learning. Let's start with a truth that's revolutionized science. Neuroplasticity. The old belief was this. Your brain forms in childhood, then hardens like concrete. But that's a myth. Modern neuroscience shows that your brain is plastic. It changes with experience. It reshapes itself as you think, act, feel, and focus. When you repeat something, like studying a chemical formula, playing a scale, or practicing a new language, your neurons fire in patterns. And what fires together, wires together. That's called Hebbian learning. Every time you learn, you're not just storing information, you're physically reinforcing pathways, just like deepening a trail through a forest. This is why repetition isn't just busy work, it's neurosculpting. Now listen to this quote from Atkinson, written over 100 years ago. The mind grows to resemble that which it constantly thinks upon. Atkinson didn't know about neurons or synapses, but he felt the truth, that what we dwell on transforms us. What modern science now calls neuroplasticity, Atkinson called mental habit. And the science confirms the mystic. The chemistry of learning. Let's go deeper. Because as a chemistry teacher, I have to tell you, learning is chemistry. The brain is powered by electrochemical messages flowing across trillions of synapses. And when you learn something new, your brain releases neurotransmitters. Let me introduce a few. Dopamine, the molecule of motivation and reward. It says, yes, that mattered. Acetylcholine, vital for attention, alertness and learning speed. Serotonin, mood stabilizer. It impacts how resilient your mind is to failure or setbacks. Every time a student feels curious, intrigued, or even stressed, their brain is awash with chemical messengers, shaping how deeply they'll remember a lesson. Now think of this. Atkinson, uh, long before neuroscience, said, As the tuning fork strikes a chord, so do your thoughts awaken vibrations in the mind. He saw thoughts as frequency, as vibrations. And today, we see how neurotransmitters tune the brain to different states of learning. Whether you're bored or thrilled, curious or fearful, 
Your chemistry amplifies or dulls your ability to learn. This is why emotional states matter in education. The right mindset literally lights up the brain. Emotion and attention, the fuel of learning. If repetition builds the brain, then emotion is what etches it. The amygdala, your brain's emotional processor, tags experiences with significance. That's why you remember the day you fell in love. But not what you ate two weeks ago. Emotion activates attention, and attention drives memory. That's why stories, curiosity, mystery, even a bit of drama, are powerful tools in the classroom and in life. Enter the prefrontal cortex, your brain's command center. This is where focus, decision-making, and self-control live. It's also where learning is either sharpened or scattered. And here again, William Walker Atkinson was ahead of his time. He wrote, The man who masters attention masters his mind. Attention is not just discipline. It's a neurological resource, and it can be trained, like a muscle. In fact, learning isn't just about what you study. It's about how focused, emotionally engaged, and attentive your mind is while you study. Habit, repetition, and the soul of learning. Now let's talk about what locks it in. Learning doesn't happen instantly. The brain encodes information. But it also needs consolidation, the process of filing memories during sleep. Yes, sleep. That's when the brain replays the day's lessons and stamps them into long-term memory. Then comes repetition, the mother of mastery. Each time you return to a thought, a concept, a formula, you're etching the neural groove deeper. Just like practicing a piano scale or lifting a weight. Atkinson called this the law of mental repetition. He said, thoughts once repeated become mental paths, roads the mind travels with ease. Modern neuroscience calls this long-term potentiation, and here's where it gets powerful for us creators of our own lives. Your inner speech, the thoughts you rehearse all day, also form grooves. They become your self-image, your beliefs, your identity. Are you telling yourself, I can't learn this, or I'm getting stronger every day? Because your brain is listening, and your cells are listening, and it is wiring itself accordingly. Knowledge as transformation. So let's come full circle. Your brain is not a finished product. It is an evolving masterpiece, sculpted by experience, emotion, repetition and attention. Every moment you choose to learn, you're not just absorbing knowledge, you're creating yourself. And when William Walker Atkinson said, the mind is the builder, he was right. He saw what neuroscience is now proving. Learning is more than mental. It's biological, it's chemical, it's spiritual. So the next time you open a book, the next time you feel frustrated learning something new, remember, you are not the same person you were five minutes ago. Something has shifted. A new connection has sparked. You are not just learning chemistry. You are becoming the alchemist. Practical exercise. Rewire your brain to learn anything. Now that we understand how learning works, let's practice it. Because knowledge without embodiment is just noise. In his book, Thought Vibration, William Walker Atkinson shares a story of a young man who struggled with self-doubt and poor memory during his legal studies. He approached Atkinson for advice, saying, I read and reread the material, but it just won't stay. My mind seems weak. Atkinson didn't recommend more study hours. Instead, he taught the man this exercise. Every morning and night the man was to sit quietly, breathe deeply, and say firmly, my mind is strong. I grasp knowledge easily. My memory is faithful. I master what I study. As he spoke, he was to visualize himself reading, 
understanding and confidently recalling information, as if watching a movie of his ideal self. He was to repeat this with full mental concentration daily for several weeks. Atkinson explained, he began to build mental images of himself as he wished to be, images that the mind accepted through repetition and belief. And as the image grew stronger, so did his power. After a few weeks, the young man returned with renewed clarity, confidence and academic success. Not because the material had changed, but because he had. He didn't just improve his memory, he reshaped his self-image. That's the power of conscious repetition and inner speech. And the same power lies in you right now. This is a neuroscience-based learning ritual, a fusion of repetition, focus, and inner speech, backed by science and inspired by mystics. We call it the Mental Pathway Ritual, a five-minute daily practice to carve neural grooves consciously. Step 1. Choose one thing to learn today. It could be a math concept, a chemistry law, a philosophical idea, or a new word in a language. Just one. Why one? Because your brain focuses best on simplicity with intention. Cognitive overload shuts the door. Focus opens it. Step 2. Write it down with emotion. On a paper or your device, write the idea in your own words. Now, visualize how it connects to your life. Feel something, be curious, be moved. Emotion is the stamp of memory. For example, learning about covalent bonds. Visualize it as a relationship of shared strength. Imagine your friendships like molecular bonds. Let it mean something. Step 3. Speak it aloud with authority. Say it out loud, slowly, clearly, as if you're teaching it. This activates your auditory cortex, speech centers and motor systems. A multi-sensory neural web. You're telling your brain this matters. I understand this. This idea belongs to me. I am becoming the kind of person who learns with ease. This is affirmation plus cognition plus repetition. It's the neuroplasticity trifecta. Step 4. Visualize future. You using this knowledge. Now, close your eyes. Breathe deeply and imagine a future version of yourself. Calm, focused, and confident, applying the knowledge you're learning now. See yourself using it effortlessly, explaining it to others, solving problems with ease. Feel the pride, the clarity, the flow. This is more than imagination. This is future memory a scientifically supported technique known to activate your brain's dopaminergic reward system. By vividly imagining success, your brain begins to encode the experience as real, boosting both motivation and retention. You're lighting up the same regions that would activate if it were already true. William Walker Atkinson called this mental transmutation, the act of transforming raw knowledge into refined power you're no longer just a student. You are stepping into the identity of the person who knows, who masters, who embodies the lesson. And if you're familiar with Neville Goddard, this is exactly what he meant by living in the end. You're not visualizing a distant hope. You're assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled, thinking from the state of success, not about it. Whether you call it neuroplastic priming, mental transmutation, or living in the end technique, the principle is the same. When you consistently think, feel, and see yourself as the version of you who already has it, your mind and your brain will catch up. That's it. Five minutes. One idea. Write it. Speak it. Feel it. Envision it. Repeat it. 
Each day, a groove deepens. Each day, your brain reshapes. Each day, your identity evolves. You're not just learning facts, you're building your mind. Thanks for listening. If this video sparked insight, if you felt the power of science meeting the soul of thought, subscribe to Speech and Mind, where inner speech meets neuroscience and where learning becomes transformation.